Hey there, Seth Worley here, with the first of hopefully several tutorials relating to my latest short film, Darker Colors. The titles in Darker Colors were heavily inspired by the titles for John Carpenter's The Thing, but with light and fog spewing through a stylized script typeface. And just like with the rest of our film's art design, I wanted to figure out the My Little Pony version of this, the colorful, sparkly unicorn version, which meant lots of color and lots of glitter. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created the look I ended up landing on. I used my own handwriting for all the lettering in the titles, which I was able to turn into a font called Evil Kids using this site called Calligrapher. You can use whatever font you like, or you can make your own. It won't affect the main stuff I'll be showing you here. All right, let's dive in. I'm gonna start by creating my comp, and I need this comp to be the aspect ratio of the film, which was 2.39 to one. So simple math tells me I can get there by setting the width to be the height multiplied by 2.39. Now, I'm gonna type out my text. I type the first credit, center align, in a custom font called Evil Kids. The lowercase letters of this font come in this smaller, more square handwriting, while the uppercase letters are the more stretched, strange lovey ones. I type the credit and the name as two separate layers and center them up in frame. I make both the layers 3D, and then I select them both and go to Layer, Precompose, and title it Text. Then I click this guy to collapse transformations on the layer. This will allow any lights I add to the scene to affect the text in the precomp while still allowing the precomp to read as a single 2D layer in this comp. Now, because I'm OCD and I hate having transparent backgrounds when I don't need them, I add a black solid and make it the bottom layer. Then I add a point light and I push it as close to the text as I can without the light going out. This creates some nice vignette and fall off on the text. Now I'm going to add a plugin called Optical Glow from Red Giant's VFX Suite. I'm going to add to the text precomp layer. I set the amount low, something around 5, and then I keep the size in the 20s, and then I color the outer tint blue and turn the vibrance up to 100. This glow helps create some extra oomph before adding my light rays. Now for the light rays, I add Trap Coat Shine to the text precomp layer. I mess with the color settings, making the midtones purple and the shadows blue. I mess with the light boost and ray length until it feels right. Then I rename my light to Shine. This allows me to go back to Trap Coat Shine and select 3D Light as my source, and now my light is the origin point for my light rays. Then, staying in the shine controls, I go to the Fractal Noise section and turn that on. This gives the light rays some volumetric fog vibes. I turn the evolution speed up to something around 25, so that smoke is like moving fast now. I turn the size up, and uh, the opacity down. I set the fractal blend mode to screen, and then I maybe mess with the contrast and other settings until it starts to look, you know, not super gross. Next, I animate the light to sweep in from the side, continue sweeping across the text, and then sweep off the other side. I want the text to go dark when the light sweeps away, so my start and end keyframe should have their Z points set to zero, so the light is coming up from behind the text and then over it and then back behind it again, like this. Looking at my text now, I, I think I want to change the color of the text, but I'm going to do it by changing the color of the light to a little more of a purplish, muted blue tone. So now we need some glitter. I create a solid, I call it Particular, and I apply Trap Coat Particular, because that's how it's done. I go into the designer by clicking this button called Designer, and I find the single system preset called Glitter. This preset gets us about 75% of the way, so we're going to go in and modify a few things, starting with the pre-run setting and the emissions extras. If I turn that up to 100, the scene is already filled with particles in the first frame. Next, I'm going to size up the emitter, setting the scaling parameters to be adjustable individually. Now, I want to deepen the emitter, scaling it up on the z-axis, but I notice that this preset, for whatever reason, is rotated 90 degrees on the x-axis. x-axis. Which means the emitter is basically tipped over on its side, so the y-scale in this case is going to be what deepens the emitter. I mess with the scale and positioning until I've got it feeling like it's filling the space between my text and the pretend camera lens. Next, I go into the particle settings and I change the color setting to random from gradient. This gradient can then be found under the color over life control. I'm gonna go in and give this a much more cupcakey, unicorn friendly palette. And then when I'm happy with that, I go to the physics controls and I set the gravity to negative 50. Now it's looking interesting. Then I find the spin amplitude control and I turn that up to around 400. So now my particles are flying around in circles, adding some really nice chaos to their behavior. The final touch is to go to Particular's render settings and turn motion blur on. And now we've got our glitter. So now I need to make it to where the particles only appear inside the light rays. And here's how I'm gonna do it. I duplicate the text pre-comp and rename it Shine Matte. Then I add a tint effect to it and a levels effect. I adjust the levels to basically crank the white levels to hell. It looks gross because it is gross. I also wanna make sure I go into Shine on this layer and turn the source opacity down to zero. So all we're getting are the shine rays. 
Now, I promptly turn this layer off and move it to the bottom of the stack where we shall never speak of it. Then I go to my particular layer and I apply the set matte effect. I set the matte layer to be my shine matte layer. I set it to read effects and masks and I set it to go off the layer's luminance instead of the alpha. Now the glitter is only visible within the light rays. Pretty neat. Next, I'm gonna use an asset from this really cool set of lens light overlays called Maven. I think it's called Maven or Maven. Uh, Maven. From Lens Distortions. These are some really gorgeous light leak and lens reflection assets and they're kind of the secret weapon of these titles. I'll show you. I'll use the Texture 7 asset on this one. I drop it into my comp and I rotate it 90 degrees so the leak itself is at the top of the frame. Then with the layer selected, I go to Layer, Time, Time Stretch, and I mess with it until the clip has been roughly retimed to the length of the comp. I know there are easy ways to do this, but I don't care. I'm a visionary artist with a meticulously honed process. Then once I've resized it to fill the frame and found the timing I like, I'm gonna give the layer a tint effect and then Video Copilot's free Color Vibrance plugin, setting the color to be as red as it can possibly get. Lastly, I set the layer's blend mode to screen. Now you see how this step is the secret weapon of this overall look. Last thing we wanna do is we wanna finish by applying a quick and easy color treatment over the thing. I create an adjustment layer, I call it color. I apply Finisher from Red Giant Universe. Then I apply Magic Bullet Mojo, setting the color space to video and the preset to light. Lastly, I add Magic Bullet Renoiser using the 16 millimeter preset. And then I sit back and I check out what I made. Check out what I made. Okay, so now we just need to make a whole bunch of these, right? With different names and credits and colors. So we'll just duplicate this comp, open it up. And the first thing we need to do is change the text. So we go into the text pre-comp and change the text there. And we go back to our new comp and see the changes have taken effect. Hooray! And then we go back to our first comp and see they changed there too. Boo! The way we're gonna make this work is using After Effects' master properties feature. We'll go into the text pre-comp and expand our text parameters until we find this thing, source text. We're gonna control click this and select add property to essential graphics. Then this window pops up and we can name this master property credit. I wanna do the same thing with the name layer. And now we can duplicate our main comp and go down to our text pre-comp in that comp and expand its properties and we'll find a new section titled Master Properties. Here we can navigate to the credit and name properties and control click on them and select Edit Value. And when we do this, we'll see that this has changed the text in the second comp, but the text in the first comp remains unaltered. Absolute magic. Thank you, Master Properties. But uh-oh, what about the shine map? The text there doesn't match our new main text. We can solve this by opening this layer's master properties and using these pick whips to parent them to the master properties on the main text precomp. And now we only have to adjust the text precomp's text and the shine matte layer will automatically match it. But let's take it one step further. Rather than having to keep navigating down here and control clicking the master properties, let's make it a little easier on ourselves. I create a new text layer called credit. I keep it small and move it up to the top right corner. I duplicate it, drag the new one to the bottom right corner and name that one name in all caps. I select both these new text layers and I control click them and set them to both be guide layers. So now they won't show up whenever I render the comp. Now if I navigate back to the master properties of my text pre-comp, I can parent those properties to my guide layer source text properties. Now, to change the text, all I have to do is change the text in these guide layers. And remember, these guide layers will be invisible in my final render because they're set as guide layers. Now I can duplicate this comp and quickly make several more title cards. I can change the color of my texture layer, rotate it to, even replace it with another texture asset, creating a nice variety of looks across the titles. So there you have it. Check out Darker Colors if you haven't already, and don't miss our recent featurette on the story of Darker Colors, in which I break down whether or not it's worth it to make a proof of concept short to help pitch your feature film. And lastly, you definitely check out Hashi's latest Cheap Tricks tutorial, in which he recreates the dad legs effect from Pixar's Onward. It's one of my favorite tutorials he's done in a while, which is saying something because he puts out tutorials roughly once every hour, and they're all amazing. Just go watch everything, all of it. See you next time.